We go now to the top Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee, Adam Schiff. He joins us from Boynton Beach, Florida, this morning. Uh, good morning to you, Congressman. The president personally good attacked morning. you yesterday uh, at a, a conservative political action uh, summit, and he balked at specifically the broadening of the investigation into his finances. Can you clarify exactly what Democrats are looking for here? Is it his tax returns? Well, I'm not surprised the president has balked at Congress looking into his personal business, uh, something he's tried to draw a red line around. But we have seen uh, from our own investigation, as well as the special counsels, just how perilous it would be for the country if we ignored or allowed uh, him to draw red lines. The Moscow Trump Tower deal, uh, for example, is among the most disturbing, because that's something the president was pursuing uh, throughout the midst of the presidential campaign, while saying he was having no business dealings with the Russians. That was a deal that stood to make him more money than any other deal in his life. And it was a deal where he was pursuing help from the Kremlin, from uh, Putin himself, uh, at a time when Putin was seeking relief from sanctions. And that is the most compromising circumstance uh, that I can imagine. So we are certainly looking deep into the set of issues around Moscow Trump Tower. We're also looking at persistent allegations that the Russians have been laundering money through the Trump Organization. I don't know that that's true, but if it is, again, it's a profound compromise of this president. Uh, you said you don't know that that's true. Who can answer that question for you? Who do you need to talk to? Well, we'll need to talk to some of the banks uh, that have been doing business with Mr. Trump, like Deutsche Bank, which has had a history of laundering Russian money. Uh, it was a, a bank, one of the very few, if only, that would do business with Mr. Trump after American banks refused. Uh, but we also will want to speak with the, uh, the accountants, the chief financial officers for the Trump Organization, uh, and others uh, who would have information about the Moscow Trump Tower deal, uh, about the issue of money laundering. Uh, in fact, we're bringing Felix Sater in to talk mm -hmm. about Moscow Trump Tower uh, in a couple weeks. Uh, so there are any number of witnesses that can shed light on whether America's national security is compromised because the president has been pursuing financial interests with the Russians. Well, uh, Michael Cohen, I know, will be testifying again before your committee this week. What kind of corroborating materials do you expect him to bring to that meeting? Well, Mr. Cohen testified uh, in open session, and I can't go into our closed session interview, uh, but about his false testimony before our committee uh, previously uh, and how that written statement had gone through different drafts or iterations. Uh, he testified in open session that others had reviewed that testimony, uh, and we have obviously a deep and compelling interest in whether others were knowing of those false statements that he would make to Congress, uh, whether there are any other uh, acts or evidence of obstruction of justice, which is also a core part of our investigation. Uh, Cohen said, though, in that open testimony, he had no direct evidence of collusion with Russia. The Senate Intel chairman also said, at this point, no evidence of collusion at this point. Have you seen, do you have direct evidence of collusion with Russia? Well, I think there is direct evidence in the emails uh, from the Russians uh, through their intermediary offering dirt on Hillary Clinton as part of what is described in writing as the Russian government effort to help elect Donald Trump. Uh, they offer that dirt. Uh, there is an acceptance of that offer in writing from the president's son, Don Jr. Uh, and there's overt acts in furtherance of that. Uh, that is the meeting at Trump Tower and all the lies to cover up that meeting at Trump Tower and apparently lies that the president participated in. That to me is direct evidence, but there's also abundant circumstantial evidence. Uh, there is, for example, evidence of uh, Manafort sharing internal polling data with someone linked to the Russian intelligence services. But Why do that? What legitimate purpose is there for things like that? Uh, Michael Cohen's own testimony was circumstantial evidence that the president was dealing with Roger Stone, who was dealing with WikiLeaks in the effort but to none of this find out to about releases of information. But impeachment grounds for you still. I mean, these are serious allegations. Well, I mean, here's the thing, and I've made this, I've made this distinction all along, uh, and that is, while there's abundant evidence of collusion, the issue from a criminal point of view is whether there is proof beyond a reasonable doubt of a criminal conspiracy. Uh, and that is something that we will have to await Bob Mueller's report and the underlying evidence to determine. Uh, we will also have to look at the whole body of uh, improper and criminal actions by the president. 
uh, including those campaign finance crimes, to determine whether they rise to the level of removal from office. Uh, I have said uh, that I think we should await the evidence from Mueller as well as our own work. Uh, and I'm pleased to see that uh, Mr. Nunes, who and I, he and I have profound disagreements about many things, are in agreement on one thing. The report and the evidence needs to be provided to Congress. Uh, I think that also needs to be made public. Uh, Kevin McCarthy, the Republican leader, has called for your recusal, saying that because you had contact with Michael Cohen, that, that uh, you should not be directly involved in these investigations any longer and that you set that standard. How do you respond to that? Well, it's pretty frivolous. Uh, what McCarthy is upset about is that I invited Michael Cohen to testify and that he accepted. Uh, and our staff sat down and interviewed him before his testimony. That's what you do in any credible investigation. Uh, Bob Mueller's team the sat down with Michael contact? Cohen seven times. The extent of my contact was just inviting him to testify and also trying to allay his concerns about the president's threats against him and his family. But our staff certainly sat down to interview him. And that's what you do in any credible investigation. Uh, Mr. McCarthy, I think, can be forgiven for not knowing how to run a credible investigation. For the last two years, they did none. But one thing that I think is really unforgivable, and that's the degree to which Mr. McCarthy and others have prostrate themselves before this president, and not just in the Russia investigation, but uh, even more significantly now with this uh, emergency declaration, which is mm -hmm. a, an attack on the Congress's power of the purse, and for Kevin McCarthy as the Republican leader to go along with that, to so debase himself before this president at the cost of our institution, yeah. I think is unforgivable. Thank you very much, Congressman. We'll be back in one minute to take a look at what did happen at that Hanoi summit. Stay with us. After we finished our interview with Chairman Schiff, he asked to turn the cameras back on to comment on what Ambassador Bolton had said about the North Korea summit. Congressman, uh, what was your impression of how the National Security Advisor described what happened in Hanoi? Well, I was struck by one thing in particular, and that is when you asked him whether the president had given up anything by going to this summit and walking away empty handed. And his answer was that the president didn't believe so. Uh, and you asked him, well, do you believe so? And he said, well, what the president believes is all that matters. He couldn't even agree with his own president because, of course, the president did give up a great deal by going to that summit, by enhancing uh, Kim Jong-un's prestige on the world stage, by giving up those uh, military exercises in the last summit, uh, and getting nothing for it. Uh, and this is, I think, the result of a president who is not prepared for these kind of negotiations, uh, a staff that is not well prepared, uh, and that is essentially flying by the seat of its pants. And it has real-world consequences. Those reactors continue to spin on, as you point out, uh, producing more material that can threaten us and our allies. Uh, and I think that this was a spectacular failure, uh, but made all, all the worse by the president's uh, obsequious comments when it came to the murder of an American citizen, Otto Warmbier. House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff weighing in on the North Korean summit. We obviously spoke uh, with both gentlemen earlier. We'll be back in a moment.